Hey, what's happening folks? Welcome back to the Raspberry Pi tutorial part seven. And today we're gonna to be covering editing text files using sudo to become their Unix super user, installing programs and some other useful utilities for the command line. So stick around. All right, so if you've been following any of the other tutorials, you should have a decent idea of how to get around within the file system. Well, today, let's learn how to edit all of those text files that you're bound to encounter. To edit text files, you'll just need a text editor. And the one that I use most often is called Pico. And Pico is just short for the Pine Composer. Pine is a mail reader that was created by the University of Washington years ago. And a lot of hardcore Linux users will you know, tell you to use VI, VIM, or Emacs, since they are more powerful, but they're also uh, more complicated. So for a beginner, Pico is fine and just much easier to get started with. And if Pico is not installed, it should be installed on the Pi by default if you're using Raspbian. You may also have Nano, which is also just a Pico clone that doesn't come with Pine. And if you don't have any of those options, you can use apt-get to install them. So hang tight and I'll actually cover apt-get in just a moment. All right, so we're going to need a text file to work with. So let's just go ahead and choose the My First Program script that we worked on in the last tutorial. And let's open that up in Pico. So let's change our directory to the home code directory and then Pico My First Program. Okay, so if you've used any text editor in the past, Pico should work just as you would expect. So just type in some text. Uh, hitting enter goes to the next line and you can navigate around the text that you've typed with the arrow keys um, To save the file and exit you use one of the control commands. So Control X will do that. It'll save the file and exit and you just answer yes to save the file and To save the file without exiting say you want to save your progress and then continue working on the file You can do that with control O Control W uh, can search through a long document if you happen to be looking for a specific line of text. You can type that in and hit enter and it will search for it for you. Control Y and V are page up and page down. Uh, in Windows you would normally type um, Control V to paste something, but since that is actually mapped to page down in Pico, you have to use Shift and then Insert. Uh, instead. Uh, if you are using a remote terminal, whatever copy and paste keys are available on your system may be different. So just take a look at the edit menu and see what those are. On my Mac, it's Apple C to copy and Apple V to paste. Anyway, most of the control commands for Pico along with their functions are all listed at the bottom of the screen if you forget what they are. And if you need more info from within Pico, just use control G. And you can also read the man page or type Pico dash dash help from the command line. So anyway, there you go. There's three ways to learn about all of the things that Pico does. And before we move on, let's just talk about some of the things that you're likely to encounter in many of the programming languages and configuration files. Um, whether it's a config file, a shell program, Perl, Java, Python, anything like that, you're going to see lots of lines that start with a pound sign. And this is almost always a comment and it's ignored by the system. So anything after the pound sign on that same line is ignored and it is not executed. And depending on the language, you might also see uh, a slash slash for single lines of comments or a slash star uh, and another star slash to end uh, the comment, which will span multiple lines. So you could actually start it out with a slash star and then end it with a star slash on a completely different line you know, say 10, even 100 lines down the road, the, the system will ignore all of those lines. So also you should know that removing a pound sign from the beginning of a line is referred to as uncommenting and adding a pound is often referred to as commenting out a setting. So if you're looking for help on something and you see that in the forum and people say, hey, just uncomment out this line, that's what they mean is just removing the pound sign. So moving on. When you are working with a lot of configuration files, often you may need to change up to a different user that has permissions to modify those configuration files. For example, you may have permission to read most configuration files, but you may not have permission to modify a file unless you're the root or super user. 
And we kind of went over that in uh, the last tutorial. Remember uh, the who am I command that tells you what uh, user you're logged in as? Well, right now we're logged in as pi. So let's step it up to the root or super user. And on this system, we only have one user, which is pi, and then there's root. And no matter who you're logged in as, say if there were multiple users on the system that you had created, as long as you have permission to become the super user, you can use the sudo command to become this super user to perform tasks. And often you'll need to do this in order to edit configuration files, mount drives, stop processes, start and stop services, etc. And there's two similar ways to do it. If you just need to do one task as root, just type sudo and then the command after it. And when you're done with that command, you'll be back to the normal pi user. And this is somewhat safer than doing uh, what's called interactive mode. Interactive sudo lets you stay as the root user across multiple commands until you exit. And uh, to enter this mode, you'll use sudo dash i and just type your password if it asks for it. If you've recently been asked for your password using this command, it may not ask you uh, within a short time span for it again. And now that you're acting as the root user, you'll have full permission to the system and you'll notice that the command prompt changed to a pound sign. All other users will still have the uh, dollar sign command prompt except for the root user. And now you can type who am I and you'll see that the system reports back that we are indeed root. And to exit back to our Pi user, we would then just type exit and enter. So now that we know how to edit files and uh, become the super user in order to save those files, let's work with uh, our dot profile, which is a um, basically a shell configuration file that tells us a little bit about our login. And if you use certain commands and options frequently, you may want to create a shortcut to that command using the alias command. And you can do this either temporarily on the command line, or if you always want it to be available, you just put it in that dot profile file that I mentioned. And so let's go to your home directory. And in that home directory, you type pico space dot profile. Now the dot uh, just says that this file is hidden unless you're using the ls-a command that you may remember from an earlier tutorial. And here you'll see that we already have a few things in this file. Don't worry about that stuff for now. We're just gonna go to the end of the file and add our aliases after all that stuff. So let's say that you want to uh, use ls and you want an a option to always come up when you use ls to show you all files. And maybe you want dash p to show you the slash after directories. Well, in your dot profile, you would add this line to the bottom. Alias space ls equals, and then a single quote, ls space dash ap, and then another single quote. So let's save that and exit. We'll use control x, answer yes. Now, if we type ls, what happened? Well, it doesn't work as we expected. Even though we added that line, um, those changes have not been loaded into our shell from the profile. Normally it would only happen on our next login, but we're gonna force it to be loaded right now. So just type a single dot, then a space, then dot profile. And I'm not exactly sure why this works. Um, maybe someone can comment about it, um, but just trust me that dot, a space, and then dot profile will reload your dot profile and apply those changes. Now, if we type ls, our alias should work as expected, and there we see that it does. So sometimes if you've been doing a lot of stuff on your command line, uh, you may wanna get a fresh screen and clear it out. Um, this is a quick command called clear for that and you may have seen me do it before in some of the other tutorials. Also, while you're working, all of the commands you type are stored in a history file. And you can uh, use your up and down arrow keys to scroll through everything that you have previously entered. If you'd like to clear this history, maybe you're paranoid, I don't know, uh, you can type history space dash C, and that will clear your history of commands. So let's take a look at what I've been running using the up and down arrow keys real quick. And there you can see just a lot of the commands that I've been running. So, all right, let's move on to installing programs. Most Linux systems today use a package manager system to install programs. And on Raspbian, 
the package manager that we use here is apt. And to use apt, we'll need to be root. So let's go ahead and sudo up. And since we'll be running a few commands here, I'll use the interactive mode. So sudo space dash i, and then uh, if it asks you for your password, put that in. The first thing we need to tell apt to do is get the most up-to-date info on all of the packages that we can install. And we do that like this, apt dash get space update. And once the update is complete, we are ready to install something new. So let's install a file manager utility that I've been using for many years. It's called Midnight Commander. And uh, anybody who's familiar with DOS and early Unix might remember this command. So let's do apt-get install mc. And if you're asked for anything, just type Y to answer yes to continue. Once the install has finished, you'll have Midnight Commander's file manager ready to use. So once it's ready, just type MC. And like I said, if you've ever used DOS, this should look somewhat familiar. The color scheme is the same. This is a more visual way to navigate around the file system and copy files, rename files, etc. I won't go into um, in depth how to use this, but just play around with it. And when you're done, you can type exit. If Midnight Commander seems like something you won't use that often, it's just as easy to remove as it is to install. So to remove that program, you would just type apt-get, then remove, and then mc. Easy, right? All right, so that's all the time that I have for today. In the next tutorial, I plan to cover some more useful commands and utilities. In the next parts, um, I'm not sure if I want to keep these as, you know, these long uh, 10 to 12 minute tutorials. I actually may break them up into faster segments. So be sure to subscribe and come back for the next one. And as always, thank you for watching.